Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the post Extreme Rules edition of No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com, as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. Got your questions here regarding Extreme Rules and other topics. So let's get started with the first one today from Ledger Krensnick. Hey Aaron, what did you think about the Extreme Rules special event overall? Overall, I thought it was a good show. Definitely a thumbs up. Let's start off with the Evolution versus Shield match, which I thought was excellent. Going in, I thought that that would be the best match of the show, and I actually thought it was going to be the main event. Turns out it was at the end of the first hour going into the second hour. Not complaining, though. I think that it was just a spectacular match. It definitely delivered, and the Shield got the clean win over Evolution. Roman Reigns pinned Batista clean in the middle with the spear, and Shield looked great. So I was really happy with this match, WWE doing the right thing, getting the young guys over. So big thumbs up for that match. Um, some might question whether it was a good idea to put that match on early. I know some people were happy that Brian's match went on last because it's important that the WWE title match is the main event. But uh, the crowd really wasn't the same after this match, and I don't really blame them. I mean, I would have been mo emotionally drained, too, after that match. And uh, the follow-up to that was John Cena versus Bray Wyatt, and that certainly did not help matters. Uh, wasn't a big fan of that match at all. Uh, I don't even see the point of having a cage match when the other guys can just interfere whenever they want. So what's the purpose in doing a cage match? And uh, the finish, I felt, was something straight out of early 1990s WCW, like with the Black Scorpion or the Castle of Fear or whatever. Um, you know, you had the little kid, the lights go out. When they come back on, there's this kid, and he, he starts singing with the, a distorted voice, and it distracts John Cena. And only after that, John Cena is able to fend off the entire Wyatt family. It's only when this little kid appears that um, Bray Wyatt is able to win the match. So I don't think it really did much for Bray Wyatt. And, uh, you know, the, the the problem with this match is that it, it was designed to make John Cena sympathetic. And, you know, the announcers were really trying to get over the idea that, that Bray Wyatt was brainwashing the fans and, you know, he's this crazy, insane cult leader. But, uh, you know, it didn't really work here because the fans don't want to cheer for John Cena. Uh, so, you know, I... It just didn't work, in my opinion. And um, got a question here regarding the main event now uh, from Panthers fan 0189. Hey, Aaron, I got to say that Daniel Bryan versus Kane was pretty kick-ass. Finally, we saw some of, the, some, of the, some of the extreme in the WWE and the return of the Flaming Table. What did you think of that match? Please answer in video. I thought it was a very good match. I don't think it was as good as the Shield versus Evolution, but I think that... It was something different from what we've usually seen in WWE hardcore matches. They went to the backstage area. There was chaos. There was audio problems, sound problems. Uh, I, I thought it was clever what they did with Daniel Bryan knocking out Kane and then putting him on the forklift and taking the forklift back to the ring. I thought that that was cool. And I liked the flying headbutt off the top of the forklift. Um, and then you had the finish, which was something I was definitely not expecting. Kane bring out a table and setting the table on fire. And then Kane ends up going through the table. The only thing I didn't like is that uh, it just looked too choreographed. You immediately had the guy with the fire extinguisher there. Brian um, immediately hits the running knee on Kane and pins him, and that's the end of it. And the thing I really didn't like here, I, I, I thought the finish was really cool, but the thing I didn't like is that uh, Brian is celebrating on the outside, and then all of a sudden, Kane sits up, uh, hits his pyro, his music starts playing. Um, I, I thought that that really ruined the finish of the match because, uh, you know, that, that should have been a decisive victory for Brian and, you know, Kane basically no selling going through a flaming table. Uh, so I, I wasn't a big fan of that, and it, it, it kind of ruined that, that finish and the end of the pay per view for me. But still, overall, um, you know, definitely a thumbs up show, and if, if anything, you have to check out the Evolution Shield match if you did not see the show. Uh, go on the WWE Network and make sure you watch that one because that that was absolutely incredible. Uh, moving on here to some other questions, and you can still send me other questions regarding Extreme Rules, uh, Spring.me/AaronRift. 
Uh, but moving on here from Breast for Business. Hey Aaron, well actually this is one more Extreme Rules question I have here. Now that Bad News Barrett has won the IC title, does it cement his place as a mid-carder or do you think he will get a bigger push? That is a good question. I've brought this up in other videos. The fact that the IC title is sometimes a kiss of death. In the past, back in the early 90s, being the IC champion meant something and it meant that you were close to being to the main event and you, you were on your way to reaching that next level. Uh, nowadays, it's just seen as a mid-card title and it's hard to say how far Barrett will go with the IC title. As we've seen with Dean Ambrose, uh, you know he's still getting a big push, but the title means nothing. And uh, I don't know if the IC title is going to mean anything from this point going forward. I'm glad that Barrett did win the match because he won that big tournament to earn the shot, and I felt that you know that that would help the prestige a little bit. The fact that he had to go through that tournament to even get a, a shot at the title. So I liked that, and uh, you know it was the right finish. He beat. Big E Langston won the title, um, you know, and the fans wanted it to happen. So, once again, another thumbs up match, thumbs up segment. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy with what they're doing up to this point with Bad News Barrett. And he's he's finally getting a renewed push. I mean, they, they introduced the new character. It seemed like it was going nowhere for a while, but now they're finally having him in matches. And we'll, we'll, we'll see where things go with it. All right, this one comes from MMA Mike Zero. Hey Aaron, I went back and rewatched the two CM Punk vs. Rock matches. Where do you put those matches up against the two Rock had with Cena? To me, honestly, they were very forgettable, considering how great Punk is. I felt that the first Rock vs. Cena match was a good match. I wouldn't call it a great match. I wouldn't really call any of the matches with uh, Rock vs. Punk or Rock vs. Cena to be great matches, but... I think people will remember the first Rock vs. Cena match because it was something special and uh, you know it was that big dream match that you had waited years to see. Uh, the first um, Rock vs. CM Punk match was decent. I didn't think it was great. I was there in Phoenix for that. Uh, but it was really cool to see The Rock win the WWE title one last time. So you know, on a sentimental note, I, I did enjoy that match because of the fact that Rock won the title. Um, the rematches meant nothing to me. I don't even remember the second Rock vs. Punk match, anything about it. I uh, wasn't a fan of them doing that rematch. I felt that uh, maybe Rock would have been better utilized in the Elimination Chamber, actually defending the title uh, with the odds against him. Um, just wasn't a fan of, of that match being a rematch at the, that pay-per-view. And um, the second Rock vs. Cena match, what can I say? I mean, that, that was a huge disappointment in my opinion. And... Uh, it was just a big letdown, and the crowd was dead for it, and uh, it just fell flat compared to the first one. So, you know, the, the first matches were definitely somewhat memorable for uh, not not for the in-ring quality, but for the historic value. All right, this one comes from I Motab ninety two. Hey Aaron, what are your thoughts on CM Punk being removed from the SummerSlam poster? Does this mean we will never see him in the ring again? doesn't really mean anything. I think it's just WWE being petty, to be honest. Um, I don't really see the point in doing this other than just getting fans worked up. I think that by doing this, you're actually drawing more attention to the situation um, and then just getting fans upset. So I, I really don't see why they did this. I don't feel it was necessary. But I guess we could say that CM Punk tragically fell off the roller coaster. I don't know. All right, another question here from Ken Carrick. Hey, Aaron, what do you think of Jay Lethal? I think he is very underrated. I think he is top class on the mic and his ring work is up with the best. So why hasn't WWE taken a punt on him? I think that Jay Lethal is a talented wrestler, but I think the problem is he was doing that macho man impression character, and I think that as funny and entertaining that was, it did him more harm than good. If it was just a one-time thing where he came out there and did the impression and then moved on from that, it would have been fine. But the fact that he made it his full-time gimmick and was doing it for several years, um, I, I really think that that hurt him a lot. And, uh, you know, people see him as a guy that just does impressions rather than being a great wrestler in the ring. So, you know, I, I think that the gimmick backfired in a way. 
Um, and I, I don't know if WWE is ever going to have interest in him. He's been around for a long time, and WWE hasn't picked him up yet. So I, I think the odds are against him going to WWE, but never say never. Anything's possible. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a video. Check out NoDQ.com for full results of Extreme Rules. And like I said earlier, you can send me more questions at spring.me slash Aaron Rift. I'll be back on Tuesday with another video uh, with my thoughts on Raw and also more about Extreme Rules. So subscribe, YouTube.com slash NoDQCAW. Share this video on Facebook and Twitter. And I will see you guys next time for more.